my friends, hello and welcome to the Season 5 premiere of GoldenEye Speed Lore. The series where we learn about the speedrunners who have dedicated countless hours to the pursuit of GoldenEye speedrunning, the strategies they developed, their personal journeys and rivalries between gamers, all through the lens of the world record progression. And tonight begins the first episode in 2021, the year which, if all goes to plan, will be the year we conclude this initial run of GoldenEye Speed Lore, the beginning of the end. So here goes. Tonight, it's the story of Surface One Agent. And let's take a look at a Surface One Agent run to begin with. It's the fourth level in the game, second mission, damn facility and runway are before it. And as you approach Surface One Agent, you have two objectives. Power down communications dish. This involves simply pressing B at a computer and enter base via ventilation tower. It is specific that it wants you to enter the base via the ventilation tower and not any other way, should there be one. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just take a look at this run, and of course, the run we are lucky to have. It's really one of the most straightforward levels in the game, and it is a run of 1 minute 30 seconds by the Madman Fletcher, who uh, we're lucky he recorded every single run of his as he began learning this game, and it's a great resource for all of us to, to see early runs of someone who may be playing Goldeneye. He's strafing out to the open here, kind of looking for where to go. He probably has somewhat of an idea of where to go based on having seen one or two runs or having played the game before. Oh, shoots the guard. See, this big building with the satellite dish on top of it is where he wants to go. And he's going to find a computer in here. And he has to press a B at the computer. There we go, objective A completed. That simple. It's that simple. The strafing can be challenging at first. Kind of strafe into the door there. Not a big deal. Now, if you destroy the computer, you fail the objective. Even if you complete it, you can complete and then fail. So, that's interesting. You know, if he pressed B, it would say objective A complete. But then if he destroyed it after that, it would say objective failed. Which is really quite crazy. Now he's going to shoot off these locks here. Okay. And he's going to have to reload. He missed the ladder, I suppose. Surface 1 Agent, 1 minute 30 seconds. A very nice demonstration of how to play a level. Look, obviously you can see it's very, very simple and straightforward. You strafe to the tower, you press B at the computer, you run to the ventilation tower, and then you shoot off the locks and enter the, uh, the end of the level. So, yeah, let's take a look at the early world record history. So 130 is what Madman Fletcher got. I should actually say, you know, I should shout out more often, he has a great series on what to do to begin speedrunning GoldenEye 007. Worth checking out if you yourself want to get into it, so I'll link that in the description for sure. And uh, it's like an elite podcast as well. Pass the runway with his pal, Pollywood. So give that a check out if you, uh, if you want to hear about the ongoings in the community as well at a very deep level. Um, so yeah, very epic stuff. Now, let's take a look at the early world record history. We can see that uh, a gentleman named Patrick Wessels had a 111 with Patrick Lax Laxo, and then Wessels got a 110, and so did Adam English, and Wes McKinney had a 109, and Sterling had a 108. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting that there was actually discussion in the thread about these early records of like who got 111 first, was it Wessels or Laxo? And there was kind of conflicting information on some sites and some pages. Um, like on this page, we can see that it clearly seems like Wessels got it first. He's ranked ahead of Lax of Laxo. So 
and this is like a um, archived page from July 98, odds are both of them got this time not on July 26, 98. This is just when the site was first made and posted. So, yeah, maybe they got it months, and maybe between the two of them, even at that time, they would have known who got it first. And that's not a huge deal, because we just do the best we can um, learning, you know, what uh, what times may have been there or not, and we piece it together as well as we can. So that's the kind of story, and we can see that there's actually no videos of any of these records, which is kind of crazy. Even down to 107 in 2001, we still have no video. Here's an interesting thread where... Um, this most frantic says he found an old file of, of records and in it, you know, now we have surface one, one Oh nine. So it kind of starts to build the case for uh, when these records were set. But yeah, interesting to see this kind of stuff from the early, early days of, uh, of the community to see posts. It's like, it's crazy that this is post is made in O2 and he's saying that's an old file in a dark corner of his PC from 98. You know, think about that four years ago when he posted it. It really kind of blows your mind a bit. But the first record we're actually going to show is the first 106 that had a video. The only original 106 with a video. And that is of Ben Gorman, a.k.a. Paragon. So let's, let's see what we can see here. He strafes on a decent strafe line, turns around some corners... And, um, here we go. Yeah, he's got the sniper out. I wonder if he's going to go for the KF-7 here. That is a really skilled KF-7 headshot with the sniper for back in, like, 2002. That's very impressive. And he's going to strafe towards the building. Oh, this is actually 2001. April 01, this was. Yeah, no look down. So look down hadn't been discovered yet. So he probably lost one second uh, due to no look down. Although, yeah, probably that's correct. He leaves the room. I wonder if he'll warp the... I'm sure he'll warp the ladder. That had to have been known about even back then. I have no doubt. So he kind of zips up the ladder. He doesn't do like a, a weapon switch or anything. He's going to expend... It looks like he almost shot every, every bullet from his uh, clip there. And it is a 106, even though it kind of looks like it might be 105, it's a 106, apparently. So this was April 2001. The first 106 was set by Carl Jobst in February 01. And in that time, it looks like uh, Ben Gorman was the eighth player to tie it. One more player would tie it, Chris Rayola, in May 01. But then we would see Randy Buikima lower it to 105. Let's watch the 105. I'm imagining that his locks are just a little bit better. That's what I'm imagining. Because the locks on Gorman's 106 could have been improved. He shot like at least 24, maybe 27 bullets. And the KF-7 shoots in bursts of three. So like, we could probably bring it down to 21 or 18 bullets, maybe even 15 someday. Like, when you press Z, it will shoot three no matter what. Oh, it looks like, it looks like Bukima is not even going for a KF-7. I don't think I saw him pick up the KF-7 there. So that's, that's quite fascinating. And I guess there would be sort of, um, uncertainty at the time. What's faster, to get the KF-7 or to only go with the sniper rifle? But he's going to sniper. He zips up. No weapon switch. Oh wow! He does the counterclockwise locks, the incredibly rare counterclockwise locks, and gets a 105. That's pretty epic. Um, wow! May 11th, 2001. A new untied world record. Pretty cool. But his, uh, I believe, neighbor and longtime rival, Ben Gorman, would also tie the. 105. It looked really good. I mean, that must have taken him quite a grind. I mean, 
Rakeem was a great gamer, and back then he probably would have been about a teenager. He would have been like a grinder, as we all were back then. So who knows how long it took on it, but it was a really nice run. And Gorman, Gorman's doing his signature headshot. So it's actually interesting. We'll see two 105s with different um, strategies, each one. Here we go. Opens the door. Opens the door, presses B, leaves here. And really, it's just all about strafing. Like, it's literally hold, whether you're using 1.1 and you hold the control stick and the C buttons, or you're using 1.2 and you just hold the top C and right C. There we go. So now he's using the KF7. It looks like he's almost using 1.1 there, but I wouldn't know for sure. Like, the locks just, like, the movement between locks was a bit slow. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, but hey, it is, it is what it is, 105. Yeah, I mean, any look down would have been unintentional, if that's what's kind of getting at in chat here. Paracuzzi is asking, I don't know if, if it was specifically about the, the stairs, but like, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean... Any look down would have just been unintentional. Like he's kind of just bobbing in the snow there. There's there's a a, a pathway in in the way. So yeah, could have been the pathway. Is that what you're you're thinking of? Obviously, you can't really see it that well because because um, the capture quality is so old, right? So that's that's my guess. It's simply the road. <laughs> It's possible that he was using 1.1 and had look up turned on. You should turn it off because you automatically, it automatically brings spawn to like the 90 degree plane angle when you're looking down. It'll bring, it'll, it'll pull your look down up. Not something I would have like encountered at that time, but anyways. So 105 would be tied by a few people, of course. Um, you know, the kind of classic old names you see come up. Tim Grenby. Carl Jobst, Greg Lavery. Wouter would get 105 and he would actually tape it as well. This thread shows like he's saying, hey, it's November 2001. Here are a bunch of times that I have on a tape. And Surface 1 105 is in this list, but it never got made. It's all, all of these times are like lost media, which is really fascinating. Or at least certainly some of them are. The Surface 1 105 is, is lost media. So, um, Obviously, you never think when you're playing as a kid, like, oh, some people might like to see my video game footage someday, but it's true. It's true. So that's kind of crazy. Um, it looks like over time, let's see, how many people get 105 as the record? 20 or so? Yeah, 20 people get 105. I'll show one more 105. This is one, this guy, this one is from a guy named Yoshi Fan, Stephen Chan. Um, people might know him better from other games, I believe F-Zero and some games like that. So, it's kind of cool to see way back in the day. Obviously, if you were a speedrunner, the community was way smaller. You might have dabbled in many games or all the speed games. So, certainly Yoshi Fan did indeed play Goldeneye a little bit and got a couple of records. And uh, Surface 1 105 may have been his best record compared to... You probably runway 23 and, and stuff like that, so. Yeah, this was almost 20 years ago. The video quality is is quite decent, for sure. Here we go, nice. Oh, very purposeful shots. 21 shots. He didn't hold Zed the whole time, but it was very purposefully aimed, which is nice. I like it. That was a really nice run by Yoshi fan there, that 105. August 2002. Hard to believe, eh? 18 and a half years ago. 
Yeah, and so in that in this point in time, you know, September of two, many of us would have been getting a set to go back to school. You know, maybe we were in eighth grade or fifth grade or first grade, or maybe some were, uh, you know, about to go into twelfth grade. But I, you know, we would have been ready to get back to school. Um, and all these guys have been playing Golden Isle all summer long, getting that Surface One 105. That's pretty cool. The record at this point had stood for a year and a half. Would this change? Well, yes, because in September 2002, Look Down was discovered to save time. It was. I am going to presume that Peter Osterland used Lookdown to save one second. So we're going to see locks that are probably comparable to that of Yoshi Fan and Ben Gorman and so on, but the Lookdown saves roughly one second per minute. So that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, well, a lot of records would have been set on that um, September 2702 because, you know, this is when Lookdown has been discovered to save time. Big deal. I'll actually pull up the Time Cutters page from right around then and kind of show all the records that may have been set as a cause of Lookdown or right around then. Obviously, the game wasn't that optimized at the time, so it makes sense that a lot of records would have been um, uh, falling at all times, being improved, being optimized, but even more so at that time because of the invention of Lookdown. There we go. Warps at the ladder. Man, this is going to be really nice. That was really clean by Osterland. Wow. That was really, really nice. He gets his Surface 1 104. Uh, excellent. Osterland, I looked him up before the lore. He had five career untieds, three of which were on Agent. Depot 26 and Surface 2 52. So he was a, a very skilled player on Agent, mostly. Um, yeah, one of his... Career on Tides, very nice job from, from Austerland. But just like Austerland's other Untides, I actually kind of want to see, I'm, I'm going to try to find this, because this is actually going to be really, really interesting. His Depot 26 was tied in one day by Wouter. His Surface 252 was tied in about six days by Boss. And his Surface 2, or his Surface 1 Agent 104 was tied in one day by boss and so let's take a look at bosses surface one agent 104 so of osterland's three agent untieds they cumulatively lasted about one week which is pretty epic to think i'm gonna imagine boss also goes with the sniper maybe not Wow, uh, wow. Oh, boss goes with the K7. That's actually surprising me. I was not expecting that. Opens the door. Opens the door, presses B at the console. He's going to get a nice... I mean, Austin had a really nice warp and re four really nice sniper shots. So, boss... 27 shots. That's a lot of shots, but I mean, with the look down and really good strafing, it makes sense that he was able to get 104 that way. So, yeah, pretty legitimate. Nicely done. Let's look at September 2002 in the Time Cutters page. So... Let's see. Right here, the streets 157s would have been so August, August, uh, 02. So look down is invented. We get streets 157, service 100152, streets agent 114. We get streets 156s, service 1 152, service 1 104, dam 53, legendary time which broke the 120 barrier. I mean, does it get any more legendary than that? That's like the most legendary time ever. And then maybe Depot 26. Uh, these Surface 1, 151s would have been thanks to Lookdown. 
maybe Surface 2, 55 as well. So yeah, we see a few times that we're definitely affected by Lookdown. Honestly, not as many as I thought. I thought we would see more. But at the same time, pretty much any record from here on out, except for levels like Cradle and Jungle, ironically, um, would be affected somewhat by, by Lookdown to some extent. So It's a crazy little tidbit, isn't it? cow uh, yeah i wasn't ex i wouldn't expect that i wouldn't have known that offhand but uh that's why it is interesting to dive back in these pages and and, and take a look now the next 104 minute show is a few other people would, would tie it wouter uh adam moore math ice ten you know these typical names that come up in the early parts of lore but the next video i'll show is this one from dan barube The audio is insane. I'm, I'm keeping it really low because it's insane. I'll turn it back up for the locks. But Barube, of course, his kind of claim to fame in the context of GoldenEye speedrunning, especially back then, was uh, he claimed that he had tied Dan 53. There was no video evidence. But part of his case for Tying Dan 53 was a bunch of runs, video showing him get 54, with 53 on the end screen, plus another couple world records, and this was one of them, Surface 1 104, which obviously would require decent strafing for that era. And so his body of work uh, gave him credibility to have that 53 counted on the rankings at that time. It was, of course, later removed. So again, we see a 27-shot uh, grate. Pretty cool, pretty decent. And that is our 104 by Dan Berube. Uh, there we go. Nicely done. And so in total, nine players would tie the 104. But now we're getting into 2003. And uh, of course, in 2003... Boss is really showing that he's an amazing player and starting to to uh, get towards Welder in first place, pass Welder, and establish himself as the champion of the game. And so Boss would try to push like every single world record, even lower than we might expect. And in August 2003, really, honestly, in a way, stunning, but in another way, we can see in these other runs that you could shoot off the locks with fewer shots than a 27 shot KF7. Um, which makes this run actually really quite interesting. I wonder why he decided to do what he does in this run. But it is a remarkably historic run. It would still be the run on the Speed Demos Archive update of the page of GoldenEye that introduced me to the speedruns of GoldenEye um, in 2005. I would have seen this at that time. Endgamer of administrator of the website would have captured this video. Um, this run is incredibly historic and it must be dedicated to our speed lore champion, Dr. Slochter. Thank you for supporting speed lore on Patreon, Dr. Slochter. Enjoy this truly historic speed run by Boss, August 2003. So he does not go for the KF7. Very interesting. Yes, no, no left ear. The YouTubers won't relate because we'll probably fix that. Yeah, I wonder what caused the frame rate to be uh, so low, but who knows? The capture methods back then. Here we go. Oh, 
Bingo Bango Bongo. Surface One Agent 103 by Boss. Absolutely brilliant. Just brilliant. Let's watch the, the locks again, because they're that brilliant. Truly stunning and utterly remarkable, and with that, I think it's safe to say that Boss would bring this level to the new age of GoldenEye speedrunning, whatever that might have entailed in that 2003-2004 era. A great, great historic speedrun, and who would be the one to come along and tie it, if ever? So, of course, the question would arise... Who would be the one to tie 103? And at the time, it is kind of interesting to think back in the 03, 04 era, before the sort of new blood showed up and started really making a name. You know, the Chervone, Illu, Ace, Clem, myself to some extent. There was really only Boss, Wouter, somewhat Jimbo and Trent to some extent. So there weren't really too many people around who would go for 103. But of course, Wouter hadn't taken his last breath in terms of Golden Ice Spearing just yet. And so, almost a year, well, about half a year after Boss's 103, Wouter would come in and nail this run. It looks to me as though Wouter only recently would have gotten NTSC here. And so, obviously that's why the capture is a bit shaky in black and white. At this point in the optimization of the game, a PAL probably does lose about a second per minute on many levels. Not all of them, but many levels. And, uh, so... Now that Water has NTSC, it probably gives him the confidence and perhaps some real advantage, real boost. Or at least it, it eliminates the disadvantage of having used PAL. You know, back when the record was 105, 106, the PAL disadvantage wouldn't have been that, um, you know, hampering. But as it gets more optimized, it would be. And, and that, I mean, wow, that was really, I think that was 15 shots, was it? 103, great time by Wouter. How many shots was this? This is insane. Okay, 18. 18 shots, but that's like still pretty good. That's still pretty good. Okay, so Mark Adam in chat says that on Surface 1, Pal doesn't lose a full second, which is probably true. Again, we did see Wouter uh, untie 151s when we were scrolling down the list of time cutters from 02. And the record would be like 150 until like 07. So... At, on NTSC, and so that's probably makes a, a fair enough argument that Pal might only, you know, maybe didn't lose any time, maybe lost half a second per minute, whatever it may be. Um, but the general mood is that Pal's a bit leggier, and thus it does lose a bit of time compared to NTSC on most levels, and there are exceptions. I'm sure many of you who have watched many Speedler episodes will know all about that. So, yeah, very, very, uh, cool run by Wouter, and believe it or not, it would be another full year before anyone else would come along and tie this run. And we'll show just who that was. It was indeed our pal, Illu. Illu. Illu also is a European player. He would have had pal, but he had NTSC from a very early point in his career. Obviously with Wouter, the NTSC pal differences hadn't been that well sort of sorted or agreed upon yet. But by the time Illu was playing, it was kind of understood that Pal did have that leggy or feel. And so Illu got a NTSC version much earlier in his career. And he was joining uh, the the elite of the elite. He was rising the ranks and he knew he had records like he had to bust in on the BBWJ party on the rankings to make a name for himself 
and that's exactly what he would do with records like this. So no weapon switch for the warp. Ooh, 21 shots. That could have been better, I would say, but it was enough for 103 for a Lu. You will take a look at the ladder warp again. So if you have enough lag, you will warp the ladder. It's because like the ladders are kind of very strangely programmed where it just accepts that like you're in the same spot and has to move you on the uh, vertical position, which the game doesn't do very well. I forget exactly how it all works. There's an old interview with Doak out there where uh, he explains it in, in detail. Maybe I'll, I'll try to link that in, in the description if I can find it. Um, but yeah, the point is, if you get enough leg, you'll just fly up the ladder, to the top of the ladder immediately. And this is seen on Jungle and Surface 1 and Aztec sometimes. And um, oftentimes switching weapons will do the trick. But I think in all these runs, I'll check the boss and Welder 1 uh, after this, I don't think they do it. I don't think they switch weapons because you generally do have enough leg when you look and turn at that point to flop the ladder. Let's see what, what did water switch weapons here? It doesn't look like it. Water just flew right up. Pretty insane. And I'm pretty sure, bo okay, boss did switch weapons. Switching weapons does generate leg. It's a good idea to do it. Interesting how Wouter and Boss didn't. Um, yeah, that is interesting. But hey, now 103 one is a three-way tie. I'm going to show a non-world record run here. It may be a pointless run to show in speed lore, because the, the run relies entirely on the music making it a, a notable run. It is a base boost run, Alex Anderson. He would not get 104 as the record, um, nor is this the record. This is a 104 achieved after Boss's 103. You can tell now the level is one of the most calm levels in the game. Very low key. You, you strafe for 45 seconds, press B at a computer, strafe for 15 more seconds, shoot off some locks. At this point in his life, Alex was into rave music and happy hardcore and so on and so the song he chose to put in this video is so um crazy it's gonna be a real um sour please in chat i would say i'm gonna have to replace it probably i'll replace it with a carathorn banger uh for the youtube version but the song he chose is called shooting star it's a happy hardcore song and by, by Bang, I believe, is the name of the, uh, of the artist. So let's watch and dance and, and, and party for the next minute and 18 seconds. And then it cuts off abruptly. I didn't know it was a, it was in DDR, this song. That makes sense. I didn't know it was everywhere either. Um, 
But I know that if you look it up on YouTube now, a lot of comments are about um, finding the song from Magikarp Used Fly, which I think is another YouTuber, but I don't know. Um, I guess the song's fallen a little bit out of favor. Um, but yeah, an insane juxtaposition. I, a great song. It, it makes me want to get a time and unhoard it to that song because um, epic song. Alex actually misses the B press on the door here and gets stuck for like half a second, maybe a third of a second. That may have cost him 103 because his locks were good. Remember, Ilu shot 21 bullets. Alex only shoots 18. This did remind me, though, that Alex used 1.1 control slot this time, so the movement is not... See that? He, he kind of... It's a bit more slow movement back to that last lock. Um, and in fact, Wouter also would have used 1.1 at the time. So we're probably going to see a similar sort of movement to that lot last lock. See, it kind of takes like... Whereas if we look at Illuse 103, I'm assuming his locks, especially the movement towards that last one, is going to be way faster. Here we go. See, he can he zips right down to that last lock. So 1.1 is disadvantage on this level, um, for sure. As it, well, ironically, it's disadvantage on every level, but you know how it is. Um, that wouldn't prevent the next person from getting 103, though. Again, it would be, believe it or not, another full year until someone else would get Surface 1 103. Who would it be? It would be yours truly. In April 06, I was climbing the ranks. I was probably top 10 by now. I wonder what motivated me to go for this time. I don't even remember. I, I, I really cannot remember why I decided to go for this time. I might have just thought I could get it. And sometimes that's all you need to think, you know? I also used 1.1. Um, I had, like, random music playing. Although when Axel uploaded a bunch of my times to YouTube, he used the automatic YouTube dub copyright free tool. But in the past 10 years, all those songs have become copyrighted. Which is kind of funny. I'll play whatever. I think the, I think the song that's randomly generated in this video is like a, a Canon in D, Pachabell remix. <laughs> um, I'll just edit over it and so on for the YouTube version. But um, yeah, let's just watch my run from April 06. And uh, it is a pretty cool one. And I have to dedicate it to a Speedlore champion. I always love to dedicate my own runs, of course. This one's going out to our newest Speedlore champion, Languid Tide. Thank you so much for supporting Speedler on Patreon, Languid Tide. Let's uh, let's take a look at my own Surface One 103 from April 06. So we look down. At this point in the level, there was still discussion on, like, do we go for the KF7 or not? Because Boss's run has KF7, uh, or Boss's run has Sniper Rifle and the other two have KF7. It's like, what's faster? It was unknown at this time. Yeah, that song was a hidden banger for sure. There's 103. I shot 21 bullet ending. 21 bullet. So that's not actually that good. 18 is much better. Um, 18 was Alex's. Was, was that right? Alex's run? But he missed the door. 
Now here I do something that nobody else has ever done like in Goldeneye history, like even to this day nobody does it. But I figure, okay, instead of switching weapons, which risks you missing your button press, and instead of not switching weapons to, to induce lag to cause a warp, why don't I just fire a full clip of ammunition and then reload and use the reloading animation to warp? And like, it worked. I don't know if it like necessarily causes additional lag. Obviously shooting the bullets in hindsight would have caused a lot of lag. But the warp was a great warp. And then, again, it's, I'm using 1.1 control style, but I really kind of whip it around. I remember having to learn that movement to whip it from the 3 o'clock lock down to the 6. And that was the fastest among you know, mine, what are Alex's old 1.1. I got 103 that way, and I was I was pretty pumped about it. I remember getting it, and I never went for 103 again to dupe it or anything for a very long time. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting and a great run and and uh, a cool world record that I got back in the day. I I'm curious what song I put in it originally. I may dig it up after lore, but I'm, I'm worried it might be too cringe. So, with that, let's uh, move on to the next run. <laughs> The next one we're going to show is, was it the next person to tie 103? No, okay, so we're skipping over poor Jimmy Bauer, he got 103, um, nice run. We're going to skip to the 103 of Leonardo Santos, which may not be that notable, but he may be notable in this lore. So, is yeah, Santos, Brazilian player, it's kind of... I mean, it really is crazy when you really think about how long we've all been around online, you know? It really is kind of insane. Um, but yeah, he was there in 06, and he was getting a few insane records. I'm sure if you watch the Facility episodes, you'll remember Santos. At this point, it's been established, everyone going for 103 is going to use the KF7. Um, boss... Actually, incredibly, Boss, I believe, is the only person to get 103 as a world record with Sniper Rifle. I wonder how many, if anyone else has done it since then. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure he's the only one to get it with Sniper. And so everyone else is going to go KF7. Yeah, shooting the guard seems to be better. Jackstart seems to be, like, more comfortable for people. Oh, he's going counterclockwise. And this is one point. That was a really, really nice... 1.2 movement shooting off the wall. That was that was really good. That was honestly great. I'm actually stunned. Yeah, you know, the great falls like randomly, kind of. I wonder what actually affects it. Those were really nice locks. Like sometimes it just falls straight down, and other times it really is like spinning. But yes, yeah, Santos got. 103. Very nice run, and uh, he would become the sixth person to get it. So after Santos, we would see some more sort of usual suspects. Cervone, who had been mostly inactive, would come back in late 06, get a few times, including Surface 1, 103. Clemens in 07 would show up and get 103, and I mean, that's a big deal. Clemens is a big deal in the game, so uh, keep him in mind. We would also see Luke Sklars get Surface 1, 103. Um, yeah, his journey through Goldeneye is always incredibly interesting because, like, this is such a vintage uh, run of his. He was only ranked, like, 60th or 80th when he got this time. Um... And again, I'm naming who has the record. I mean, it's a lot of top players at the time. So even in like 07, this was like the first inclination that Luke has the potential of being a top player, even though he hadn't quite filled his times page and so on. He got a few records in 06, 07, and Surface 1, 103 was one of them. And yeah, I just remember all of his videos from that time looking like this. Um, having this webcam capture. You know, I had my own webcam capture. He had his own, actually, digital camera for me. But So quite an aesthetic and quite a nostalgic video for me to see, you know? And yeah, Mark Adam brings up a great point, which is that this is PAL again. 
Um, we wouldn't know the full extent of how disadvantaged Pal would be, but we had an idea that it probably was pretty disadvantaged, um, at least for like half a second, you know, on, on Surface One Agent. You know, maybe, maybe not. But again, that's just another, um, you know, piece of the puzzle that suggests Luke is a very good player, you know? That he can get 103 Surface One Agent on PAL. Um, great run by Luke. Absolutely great run. Yeah, I think we'll we'll see another run of his later on as well. Wow. 21 shots, though. I mean, it's decent. It's, it's like nothing wrong with a 21-shotter, but uh, I'm surprised at how many of these are 21-shotters. I guess we're still we're still early. And okay, the next 103 I'm going to show is that of Alex Anderson. He would get 103. Um, so that's cool. This was May 07. He would be the about the twelfth person to get 103. And this one has no music version with it, unfortunately, but uh, I think we got our fill last time. I do like how this lore has taken on this, like, extra metagame of, like, seeing how the great will fall on each runs. It's kind of cool. I think it, like, adds to the, um... You know, it gives everyone something else to look forward to at the end of each run. So, Alex is actually taking kind of a wider path here. Probably to generate leg, I would say. That was a really nice warp. Another 21-shotter. Yeah, the more you're gonna look up at the end there, and the more you're gonna hook in a wide right, the more lag will be generated, the more likely you are to warp. Uh, nothing worse than, I mean, think about it, you're playing for a minute straight, it's not that thrilling. Kind of annoying when you miss the warp. So you want you wanna get you wanna get potential runs that could that could be the record, you wanna get lots of warps, and that's what Alex was going for. So very clever of him to to take that kind of wide route. And yeah, it's interesting because I think his first shot, his first burst misses. Right, so it's like one, two. Okay, so his actually, his his second shot in that burst hit. Oh yeah, it actually it fully hit his three shots and it's off. And then I think there, let's see. The 12th shot does knock it off. So he could he actually hit it in 18. These three are nothingness. They're shooting into the great. Um, so it really was an 18 shot great, even though he actually shot 21 times. I think the, the great falls flat here, which is kind of cool. It really is just completely random. The flat great fall. Cool. I think this next run has a very uh, spinny great, although I'm not 100% sure, but We'll take a look. So at this point, at the end of 2007, it looks to me like it was 14 people who had tied 103. I'm just going to uh, pull up the rankings at the end of, of uh, 07 here. And December 31st, 07, do you remember where you were? I actually think I do, which is kind of interesting, which is anyways. Okay. Um... Yeah, looks like 14 people have 103, so... Cool. My friends, you may be wondering, is 102 possible? There's not really any inclination that it is. I mean, yeah, people are doing 21-shot greats when it looks like 18 is, is possible. But, like, the strafing seems decent. There seems to be no boost happening. It doesn't really seem like anything is implying 102 is for sure possible, right? However, in early 2008, 
February 15th, one Dave Clemens would decide... I mean, he would decide a lot of things. He would decide to basically go for every single world record in the game and just go for insanity. And he would get this remarkable speedrun, historic speedrun. I mean, it's still... I mean, to this day, it lives on as an absolute legendary speedrun. It is Surface 1 102 by Dave Clemens, and it is dedicated to our Speed Lore champion, Riley P. A huge thanks for supporting Speed Lore on Patreon. Let's watch this remarkable, remarkable speedrun. Nice capture quality from Clem. In game, music off. He was probably way too nervous to play with music on. Because knowing your pace, knowing like, oh, I'm like two tenths faster this run, it would cause you to like choke the uh, the locks. It gets in your head, you know? So Clem is going for the slapper KF7. Again, to this day, I'm still not sure there is a consensus on what is faster, if any are. I think it's just a matter of preference. I can see slapping being less laggy, but aside from that, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Really nice run. You see, at the, at the stairs here, you didn't like bounce down the stairs, which is often you'll see, you'll see these stair bounces. He takes a really tight line, goes for the warp. Oh my, 18 shots, spinny great. Beautiful run. Absolutely beautiful run. Surface 1 Agent 102. Unbelievable run. Great run. I mean, yeah. You can really see how much tighter his line is from the trees than Alex. And in a, maybe he knew. Maybe he's like, if I strafe it so well and get a 18 shot great i can get 102 and that's exactly what he did and it's actually really hard to like judge the pace of his run because he has music off which of course was intentional as i explained wow jumps right in there 102. What a time, what a remarkable world record, and certainly a great place to sort of act as the waypoint, the halfway point of this remarkable Golden Ice Speed Lore episode. So, how would things play out from here? Well, I suppose it's not too much of a spoiler if I reveal that Surface 1 102 would remain the record for at least the next decade. At least the next decade. So the next many runs we're about to see are all going to be 102s. And I believe this should at least raise the question, is Surface 1 101 on Agent possible? And that, I suppose, is what we're going to find out through the next half of this Speedler episode. So, of course, the, the next person to tie 102 would be Perfect Ace. Two months later, he would have had NTSC by now, uh, certainly an NTSC console, and I have to imagine he would have had NTSC Goldeneye as well. So this is probably NTSC. He's Ace. He's an unbelievable legend. This looks like it was achieved around his 13th birthday, so he was either like 12 or 13. The guy uh, is a prodigy, to say the least. And this is a um, a Surface 1 102, as we'll see again. He's also going for the slap. Very interesting. It, you know, This was a level where I was kind of unsure if I would do a speed lore, because obviously it's a very simple level. 
there aren't that many new records set on it. But doing this lore has already given me an appreciation for all the small things on the stage. Do they slap? Do they shoot? Um, how tight is their line at the end? Do they bounce off the stairs like that? Wow, he almost got a booster. That is really, really, really interesting. So he's looking, he's taking a tight line but looking up. Warps. And it's an 18 shot. That was really nice. And they had the kind of uh, back and forth great 102 surface one agent. Did he? I, I want to see how much cutscene he watched. Because this actually really changes, like, I don't want to say everything. Wow. So, he, so Ace watched the entire cutscene. And as a result, or maybe unrelated, I don't know, this guard was here and almost boosted him. So right off the bat, we, we know a boost saves about a third of a second. If Clemens' run was 102.9, maybe with a boost you get 102.6. It's kind of interesting, right? It gives you more time on the locks, a bit more forgiving. So that's something interesting to keep in mind. The next 102 would not come from Boss nor Elu, nor myself, nor any of these, you know, other well-known players. It would actually come from a gentleman named Leonardo Santos. Brazilian player. He has a song from Interpol in here, actually. Um, so unfortunately, I have to mute it. Kind of an interesting webcam capture. Um, it is notable because this was a mystery for a long time, but it's actually starting to make sense now, you know? And this is actually, um, we're going to see two runs here. This is a 103 by Santos. Um, this is how you play the game. You grind out run after run after run. Oftentimes in lore, you don't see that grind, run after run after run. Um, but we see it here with, with um, Santos left this run on because it was a completed 103 oftentimes it would be a, a failed run a quit out run um if you quit out 105 on top of the a tower after shooting at the locks it would have been 103 pace um, 104 would be 102 pace if you missed a, uh, if you missed a lock but here we go shot 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 not bad, 21 shots, and he gets a 103, tries again, back to the grind. And, uh, of course, like I said, this, this run is very, very interesting and remarkable. Something very strange happens, and as such, a bit of an oddity of a run, it is dedicated to our Speedlord champion, Mr. Moxie. A huge thanks, Mr. Moxie, our longest supporting speed lore champion uh, amazing uh, enjoy this run dedication mr moxie the 102 of leonardo santos the third person to get the time so again he watches the entire cutscene takes the corner nice line here does he go for a shot on the on the guard or no? I wonder what he... Oh, he goes for a slap too. I wonder who the first 102 shot will be that we see tonight. I'm, we're not going to watch every 102. There's many. But I wonder what the first shot one will be. If any. Opens the door. Opens the door. Presses B. Very nice. Back down the stairs. Does he get a bounce? No bounce. Smoothly down. And he gets a boost. Santos gets a boost, saving roughly a third of a second. And he warps the ladder very nicely and gets an 18 shot. Great. And this has got to be 102. And it is. A beautiful surface one agent, 102. Very, very nice run by Santos great run wow 
you kind of again right obviously there was a language barrier there but you kind of kind of this mysterious character in the community and as a result we wouldn't really understand that boost would be called the santos boost because no one else could get it but it's so funny because in hindsight when you just watch the ace run he watched both cutscenes and almost got it and so like looking back at it 13 years later it's so obvious that if you watch both cutscenes maybe that guard will be in the proper spot to boost you but like we were so blind the knowledge was so arcane that like it didn't hit us at the time it's really really funny it, it's like i'm learning how obvious this is in hindsight while, while doing this lore you know so yeah well the next person to tie 102 would be a few months later now it may be a bit of a surprise because this is clearly a webcammed run you would never expect that this would be a big boss man record, but it was. He was actually at a meet with Clemens. Boss was hanging out with Clemens, and as a result, he got this time, and that's why it's uh, webcammed instead. A historic boss record, plus a sort of uh, oddity as well, being uh, being webcammed instead of uh, captured. This one also is dedicated to a speedlord champion, our pal. Madrai Bread, thank you so much for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's uh, watch this boss, Surface One 102. I wonder if there's going to be any commentary. I honestly don't know. You can hear them in the background. He does the slap as well. So we're four for four for four on slaps on 102s. He's not having the rolling shutter like Santos or I have. Oh, he looks. That was a really tight line there. You can easily get stuck on the rail, which is kind of annoying. You're trying to optimize every single strafe, every single turn. It's very easy to get stuck on these rails or on these doors. Nice warp. A little bit off-center there. Still 21-shotter. Boom. Yeah, he fully missed that first clip on that first lock. Could have been better, for sure. Surface 1, 102. I'm kind of surprised uh, Boss and Clem didn't, like... like they probably pop popped off when he got it, and this is them re-recording it. But I mean, back then, think about it, 09. You know, nowadays it's so natural if you're filming something. Oh, I got this 102. Everyone knows how to act on like a YouTube style camera now, you know? But back then, you should I say anything? I don't know. And I guess Boss opted not to say anything there. So very interesting run. Um, that Boss. Yeah, that Boss 102. Epic stuff. Now at this time, I remember posting this thread... It's an interesting clip. We'll just we'll just watch it. This is right after Boss got 102, pretty much. So I posted this and asked Henrik Weister, the TASer, if this is a viable strategy. If like if if I'm onto something here, I just came across this. I might have been sort of going for 102, maybe not too seriously. You see that? If you leave the ladder at a certain point in time, like right here, you can sort of like get a glimpse in to the ventilation tower. And so I asked, could you warp into the tower? And Henrik basically said, no, this is impossible. You have to pass directly below the threshold of the, of the um, grate. So the level doesn't despawn you unload till you're like there and so unless you could jump from this spot and this is only unless you could jump from here 
directly under it, which is not possible. In theory, if you could do that, it might work, but you can't even get further in to the ventilation shaft than this spot here. So this is a nothing. But it is interesting that it was noted and it was like wondered if it's possible. You know, again, back then, a lot of stuff might only have been captured through text. Oh, I saw this weird thing in the game. Um, but, you know, it's always useful to show a video. I, even to this day, people will still email me. I saw this weird thing in a video game. I'm like, show me a video. If you think this is a new strategy, get the controller, show me a video, and, and let's let's see what you're talking about, you know? So things aren't as useful without one. A video is worth a million words, I suppose. Now, who do you think the next person to tie this record would be? Clem, Ace, Santos, Boss. It would actually be a year and a half until the next person. And I bet you... You all know the name of this player, but you would never guess it would be the next person to tie 102. A true grinder, a true legend by some extent. Uh, he would become more well-known for something that would happen almost exactly four years later. This is the 102 of none other than Ryan Lockwood. Yes, he would become the fifth person to tie 102. And Lockwood is a well-liked guy. Uh, interesting that he would get the record, one of the earliest guys to get it. And so this run is dedicated to our Speed Lore champion, 4-Day Bender. 4-Day, a huge thanks for supporting Speed Lore on Patreon. Thank you very kindly. Uh, let's, let's watch Woody. Lockwood, Woody's run. I remember a video, I, I you know, over the past three, four years, um, you know, Woody's tried a lot of different things, and I think at one point he was trying YouTube a little bit, YouTube and Twitch, and we kind of cleaned up his YouTube, uh, un, like, unlisted videos that were like 10 second clips of random Goldeneye stuff, you know? And I think one of those clips would have been cool to see here, it was something called, like, My Chance at Glory Dashed, and it was him, like, choking the very last lock on this level it was like a 102 base run he just misses the last lock and i kind of wish we had that video still um but he probably unlisted or deleted a long time ago so we don't have it but um we do have his 102 which is pretty damn cool press zed there accidentally which is interesting i'm sure he remembers that zed press i'm sure he does i would almost i would almost guarantee it Probably he's just trying to turn the control stick very tightly and he happened to press that with his finger. Warps. Oh, oh, oh my god, that was 18. That was one of the best locks we've seen. 102. Unbelievable. If he didn't miss that 3 o'clock lock. It would have just, like, been a 15-shotter. Perfect, perfect. He, like, a little bit missed it. Oh, my... That is just stunning. I'm stunned. That was an incredible run. I'm actually... My breath is, is taken away. Oh, look at this. This is very interesting. Awesome job. That third lock shot was scary. Fantastic run. It, like, think about this, right? Like, we know... Look, Rutsu, 11 years ago. 11 years ago. It seems you had almost had no leg at the lock shots. Is it because you gotta go more to the left? And then Woody is up here responding because the comments got all broken up when they did the Google Plus integration. But it's... What's so crazy is like everyone watching this video knows Lockwood, knows Mark Rutsu. To see them post from 11 years ago, I mean, it really hits you. It's like, will there be a time in the future when... We see stuff that we posted 20 years ago, 30 years, 40 years ago. Will there be times when our grandchildren see stuff that we posted 100 years ago, 150 years ago? You know, it's not something we ever would have thought of when we were posting whatever we may have been posting, you know, on the internet. Um, so it really, it just really makes you think 
is all. It really makes makes me think, you know? Yeah. I mean, even seeing 11 years ago just really blows my mind. Um, because, like, I've, I've lived and grown with these guys in that time since, you know? How many countless fights I've gotten with Mark Rutsu over those 11 years, and and uh, how many games I've played with Woody in that time, and and uh, all the, all these ups and downs, you know, it really it really floods back to you when seeing that 11 years ago. And so, world records as of January 2010, we simply have five people with 102. Very, very remarkable, uh, interesting mix of players. You would expect Clem, Ace, and Voss. Santos and Lockwood, maybe not, not as much, so. But again, now we'll just watch the 102 of Mark Rutsu, Marcus Stryker, which would happen in 2010, July 2010. Kind of decent audio. Yeah, I mean, the Sam Sammy chat comment was actually very, very funny, I gotta admit. And he brings up a good point. People will be really like... People will dig up comments from this current era, 2020, 21, and be like, whoa. You know, this is what people were thinking or feeling at the time. It's, it's, just, un, it's just insane. It's a good point, JD Black. Obviously, Mark is a great gamer at this game. He experiments with a lot of things. It makes sense he would try looking up to see if it was as effective as looking down, you know? Tight line, warps. That was really nice. The first lock was a little bit off. But other than that, the locks were great. Yeah, that's a great point, Mystic Cheese. Like, it's a, it really is. Like, the ground are polygons that you're rendering. While you're looking up, you wouldn't be rendering those. So, like, have we made a mistake? Is looking up even less laggy? People have tried it on DAM. It certainly seems to have some merit on DAM. But um, people don't really try it elsewhere. So I wonder if... Like, you, you just bring up a really good point. I wonder, I wonder. I really, really wonder. So he missed, like, five shots on this lock. Like, a full burst missed, and then the second burst gets it. And then he's already well away, so... Again, it seems like 21 shots, 18 shots is about standard for a 102. There we go. Okay. Now... Interestingly, we're now in 2013. In all that time, and to be fair, it was sort of a quieter time in the Golden Eye Spearing community. In all this time, only Mark Rutsu tied 102. Kind of crazy. We can see that you know these 149s have been improved to 148s. Let's look at the total time, 113.43. Almost a full minute has been cut. I mean, wh when you think about that perspective, it's kind of crazy. Almost one full minute cut, and yet only Mark has got 102. Who would be the next person at 102? Well, it would be Luke Scholars. And this is actually quite interesting because he says it was his comeback world record after a four year break and his first ever record on NTSC. So that's a big deal. Oh yeah, he used uh, Dire Straits, Walk of Life. Great song. I'm going to mute it, but like, it, it's it's a really good song usage um, for this video. And obviously a very, very important video in the history of Goldmine, because we know Luke would go on to become champion of the game. And this was his first world record back, after many years away. And... His first on NTSC, he finally decided after, you know, now we're in 2013. He would have decided after seeing people stream on Twitch, you know what, let's get back involved in this game. 
let's get a capture card, let's get the NTSC. He's obviously a little bit older now. Instead of being 16, 17 years old, you know, when he got that 103 record, now he's in his, you know, early, mid-20s. He can afford a capture card in the NTSC um, version of the game. And you can make things happen. And um, he took charge of his own destiny, went out there, got Surface 1, 102, and it would be the beginning of many great things to come for Luke Sklar's. That was, oh man, it was like a really, he just sliced those locks right off. It looked like, he, you know, that was a really nice locks. I'm very impressed. Like he almost was under that first one and then just kept with it the whole time. Boom, boom, boom. I think those were the best locks we've seen yet tonight. It looks like he had that last one off after like shot number 16. 15. He had him off in 15. And the, 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 the final three were throwaways. So yeah, those are by far the best locks we've, we've seen tonight. Very impressive. Wow. Great stuff by Luke. And yeah, a very meaningful record. Okay, so we've actually seen all the 102s that have been set to this point. 2013. We're going to have to start skipping over some 102s. Of course, we can't show them all. The next three we're going to show all happened in 2014, and they all have reactions or commentary. So they're kind of more fun to watch. This one is Mirror Mage, who will actually become the next person to tie 102. He was a brand new player. He would have been only like 16 or 17 at this time. Showed a lot of potential. So he's almost like Luke was eight years prior. Mirror never came back and became champion or anything. He moved on to better and brighter things, but he obviously had the skill to be a, a great Gold Knight speeder, and he has made his mark over the years as well, so. Wow, is he going for the slap too? This is crazy. I, I have to check to see if anyone else slapped or not. Oh my god, the net, okay, the, this is really something. Powers down the console. Okay, here we go. The slap is more standard than the shot. Wow, that's crazy, JD. So, mirror shot three there to, to, to increase leg. Oh, did you see how fast that was? Could have been, like, could have been faster, even. Oh! What the f Look at that sh Look at that! Take that to the bakery! Look at that! Look at that! Yo! 102 NA crew! Look at that! Done! And then you hear him, uh, leave the room. Leave the room. So yes, so Mr. Moxie, so the idea is that if you cake a time, it was a cakewalk. It was as easy as cake, right? This has become going to the bakery, you know. I just took a scroll past the bakery and got the time. This is how uh, words and terms evolve, so... He nailed it. His first lock was a little bit off. Um, yeah, I, I left a comment on this video six years ago, which is kind of crazy. So that's cool. Great, great time by uh, by Mirror Mage. Let's see. It, well, it sort of does sound like take it to the bank, right? Take it to the bank is you've succeeded, you've got something, let's deposit to make it like official, official. Whereas take it to the bakery, you know, it's sort of a similar... It's probably where the phrasing of that came from. 18 shots. And actually, there is something to notice here. So it would have been learned around this time. So he misses... His angle is a little bit off, but his shots didn't come out early. So he didn't really miss those shots. However, he adjusts his angle perfectly. That was so nice. You see the R aimer come up there. If you crouch, and we might cover this a little bit later if we watch my video, 
But if you crouch here, most of the time crouching doesn't change Bond's height because the game doesn't render Bond's height. It just kind of, you're rendered as like a 2D uh, form on the ground. But f this is one of the rare cases in the game where your height is rendered. And so if you crouch, you can save it's around 0 0.15 seconds. And so Mirror Mage has crouched. That's a time save. That's pretty significant. Um, his locks, I think, were good enough for 102 anyways. But yeah, the crouching does add in a little bit of a time save, which which is a key. Which is very, very nice. So that's the first one we've seen with, with a, a crouched uh, ending. So great job by Mirror Mage there. Well, the next run that we're going to show is, again, one of mine. This is like a cool record of mine. Um, I didn't have to grind that hard for it. I remember I did a bit of a grind, but it wasn't that insane. And I'm 43 minutes into a session here. I was probably playing the best gold knife of my life. I had gotten Streets 154 before this, Secret Agent Untied. Um, I think Bunker 1, 102 was around here as well. I was playing so, so well. And again, this is me uh, live recording in XSplit. So you're going to hear my reaction to it. I was pretty happy. Um, but yeah, I feel like I kind of kicked it as well. Great run. Always love dedicating my own runs out to the Speedlord Champions. And this one goes out to our pal, Sammy Limex. Thank you for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Sammy Limex, a pleasure. Let's uh, enjoy this speedrun. Well, you need to start using 2.2 here. I'd have 102 by now, probably. So I was resentful that I hadn't been using 2.2. Um, that saves a third of a second to start. It is very difficult to play 2.2. I really only said it kind of jokingly because I don't think I would play well with it. Now it's funny because I remember shooting that guard, not slapping. So like obviously I I, I misremembered my own run. And it, I guess like JD Black said, everyone slaps now, so I'm kind of surprised. I I genuinely thought that I I shot that guard with the PP7 so slapping. Yes! 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 F man. Holy f Was not expecting that to happen. Nice. Alright, I'm f done here. Insane f locks. That's all. Insane f locks. Alright, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that. Good times. That's actually the first profanity we've heard in um, in tonight's episode. 1.2 control style I used. The locks actually were insane. And it's actually a 17 shot lock. Which at this point in time would be the lowest. Although there's a few runs we didn't watch. And so if you press R to crouch. It interrupts the three burst KF7s. So you can stop part way through a burst. And that's exactly what I did. I had... Five bursts. I stopped two two shots into the into the sixth burst. So seventeen shot locks, and uh, one hundred two. Japanese as well. I wasn't the first to go in Japanese. I believe Carl was the first to go in Japanese. But um, it looks like I was. Was it Japanese or am I making that up? Yeah, Japanese. It probably doesn't matter. Japanese versus English, but that was a really, I mean, I look back at the run, I'm like, I'm happy with that run. It was a good time in my life, um, July 2014. I would, I would probably go back to July 2014. I think we all would, uh, to at least go on one adventure, you know, and, uh, 
good good times good times there surface one 102 beautiful beautiful run very very happy with that run I was about the 12th person to get it not long after I would get it so would Jimmy Bauer again sorry Jimmy Bauer who's skipping over you this episode um, but Jimbo would as well Jimbo's 102 is actually quite interesting because he was actually staying at a hotel for like a two or three weeks whether he was on a business trip or some training I forget exactly but he's like well I'm gonna be bored at night in a hotel room not much to do I'm gonna bring my N64 and try to grind out some golden eye and he did and he actually got 102 this way and this is actually a rare Jimbo commentary video because I guess he had not much else to do while staying in the hotel so I'll just let Jimbo speak for himself and uh, explain his 102. Kappa. So this is my Surface One Agent 102 that I got two nights ago. Considered to be a tier three world record. I actually think this belongs in tier four. I feel like all that really matters is fast locks. Really happy with my approach there. Clean door, good stairs here. The one blemish in the run is right there, that little stuck. Really bad music here. I definitely had faster music coming out of there. Sixteen bullets. And a little JB there just to prove it was me. That's pretty cool. The little JB signature. A lot of guys do little signatures like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, sixteen bullet run. Um, six or sixteen would actually been fewer than my seventeen, which is quite nice. So, yeah, great, great run from Jimbo. You know, he, 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 he went out there and just nailed it. Um, yeah, the, the, the whole tier thing <laughs> is kind of funny because obviously it's kind of an abstract beyond even the ranking system sort of uh, endeavor. But, like, people have tried to establish tiers, one through eight, of how strong... GoldenEye records are. I mean, you guys know the tier maker, you know, S tier to F tier. You guys know how it all works. So throughout, the, especially the past, like, some, in the Twitch era, we started to rank records by tiers. And this is now the easiest record in the game, Surface 1, 102. Um, yet, back then it was tier 3, which is, you know, in the kind of upper half. And like I was pointing out in chat, at this point, my Untied of Streets 154... You know, I would, it, I would often hyperbolize my own achievements back then, and maybe that worked against them to some effect. But I think Streets 154 would have been considered like tier 4 or 5 back then. Only one person has tied it in the past 7 years. Meanwhile, you know, 50 people have tied this, and this was ranked ahead of Streets 154. So it, it kind of goes to show that, like, it's almost impossible to accurately rank the strength of records. You know, things always change and um yeah it's never it's never yeah wow okay i'm gonna pull up the tier list the last update was october 2020 it's not like that weird or bad so service 1102 is now a tier 7 um street 24 has been upgraded to tier 3 <laughs> But, like, still, you know, um, Tier 1, There, are, I mean, there are some insane Tier 1 times, that's for sure. So, yeah. There's no Tier 8s. There used to be Tier 8s. So there's no longer records that are considered, like, super easy anymore. There are a few Tier 7s. Anyway, that's that. Just a little funny, epic little, little uh, way it is, I suppose. I, you know, that's all. Well, hey. There's no consent. It's usually one person. It's usually one person just saying what's up. So it's not even uh, a consensus. 
So, January 1st, 2015, um, 14 people have 102. Let's, let's, um, let's watch some more 102s, I suppose. So here's one. Okay, this is going to be the what I believe is the first 102 achieved with Control Stall 2.2. So, like was pointed out in chat, you'll gain... This is by Gus Riolo, by the way. You'll gain a third of a second to start, and then you... It's difficult to crouch at the end, but if you do manage to crouch, you save that additional 0.15. And so this can save about half a second compared to the Clem 102. And as the first 102 with 2.2 control style, this is significant. Yeah, I mean, Zosu, it's, it's just one guy's list is all it comes down to. Like, that's that's really all it is. I, I had to convince people that Street 24 is, is really, really good, you know? No one believed me for five years. Um, but hey... Wow, nice door. I like the door. I should do a tier list on stream. I I just can't. I don't know. I don't I don't love comparing things or people anymore. To be honest, there's too much vitriol can stem from it. Nice warp. Eighteen shots with two point two. That'll do the trick, I would say. And because it's two point two. You can zoom in and out in the cutscene, which which is like, if you get a potential 102 run, you're gonna do it for like the swag effect. The actions on the sec on the second controller process during the cutscenes, so you can shoot and zoom in and out and so on and so forth. 102. Yeah, Samo brings up an interesting point um, that I think is reasonable. So, anyways. There it is, Surface 102 by Riolo. Okay, Illu has a reaction, so we'll watch Illu as well. This is 2015. Total caffeine today, 370 milligrams. That's a lot. Don't do that unless you're under medical supervision or professional training. That's like nine Cokes? Or like four or five cups of coffee. Yeah, caffeine is is. I, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'll just leave it at that. Stuck on the guard a bit. I don't believe Alu's playing 2.2, I believe he's 1.2. I believe that Zosu, I believe that, yeah. But I mean, again, I'm not a doctor, so... Oh. 18 shots. That was a close one, man. Perfect crouch. I knew I was close. I could feel that the spirit, the spirit of 102 was in the room. Yeah, I was having great, some great strafing on many of those runs. So I knew I didn't need insane logs anymore. Thanks. This is another great point game. More than for just a little bit more, definitely. This is really great. Really, really great. 44% accuracy. Oh, you can actually see the accuracy for the box. So if I, if I check my sniper runs on one of threes, it should be 100% accuracy. It was worth going through for that with 1.2. I guess it wouldn't have taken that long to learn to put the X, but...
was definitely not needed. It is interesting that, that Ilu points out again that he was a bit reluctant to learn 2.2. Kind of annoying. Um, of course it's going to be a little bit annoying, right? To, to play with a second controller. I believe Birdie, who we might actually see in a minute, once described playing 2.2 as like trying to hold on to two eels that just jumped out of the ocean. Uh, so it's tough. So obviously Ilu, myself, Jimbo, we all went 1.2 instead and obviously you're giving up a third of a second that's a lot of time to give up um but hey here's another one or two it's actually a very good one by rich no God damn it. not a guy who comes up a lot in speed lures i'll get these blocks i'm gonna see how many i get a 102 man world matter of time world records rich no has got so seven total records, Rich No, and this this is the only one that's still a record today, so very epic. Sixteen shots, very nice. Oh Sixteen god. shots. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that's getting top Dude, end. This is what I'm, I'm gonna sh myself. <laughs> oh my god. I got it, dude. I got it. Sixteen shot rocks, dude. Insane. Insane. Yeah, yeah. Really good run. This is like one of the better 102s around. So, yeah, those last two were, like, so good. Oh, man. Yeah, jeez. Really, really nice run by Rich No. So, way to go. One that always catches my eye. So, this next one <laughs> is by a gentleman named Birdie. He actually goes by Red to Light Red now. Service 1, 102. I don't know if he used 1.2. It... I think no. I'm thinking no, 1.2. Um, there seems to be no audio on this. Maybe it's... Maybe it's no music. So let's take a look. Perhaps no music. I hope there's audio. No audio. Is, is um... Is there a Twitch clip of this? Is there a Twitch clip? I have the YouTube version. Let's see. I'll pause right here in the door. So yes, we're uh, and we, we've watched the run to the point where he enters the enters the satellite room. There we go. We're in the satellite room, and now let's watch the Twitch version from here. Okay. Mrs. Pressing B. Mrs. Pressing B on the console. So this is now a failed run. He's grinded for dozens of hours for 102. Oh my god, dude, this is like the fastest run I've had in so long. Maybe because I missed the console, I don't Yes, so he, after hundreds of 103 dupes, he finally got a run fast enough for 102. Beautiful locks, but it was the run where he missed the console. I love showing fails not to enjoy the pain of other speedrunners, but to demonstrate that not every run goes as planned. It's hard. And we have more runs to see because Alchemaz made what is called the 
Birdie 102 fail montage. It's five and a half minutes long. Let's roll it. Can you hear that whine? That high-pitched whine? Maybe not. Gotta stop. You have to stop lighting. That one was brutal. great for their time but even to like today obviously today they're not good by today's standards but they're good by the game feels lived in it feels uh, appropriate with the graphics look like character mannerisms and stuff make sense are like a big part of video games I don't like uh, a good thing that to trigger me is like uh, people say graphics don't make a game and they don't but they're implying something else they're implying that it doesn't matter what graphics look like that's gonna be pretty close to it not a great warp. That's gotta be pretty close though, right? Sixty hours. 
Oh my god, dude. <laughs> if, <clears throat> just so we're clear, just quickly between me and everyone who's watching just right now, let's just, if anyone asks, I caked this and I never struggled. It is funny, it is endearing, he's obviously a very affable guy. Um, one of those guys that everyone likes, everyone gets along with, you know, so a funny dude. Um, and it is funny because it's like, oh, let's pretend I didn't struggle. But the struggle's what makes it great, it's really what makes it so great and so, honestly, inspirational in the end, you know? these are. This is one of the things that I, I really like to share in my content lately is inspire others and i think birdie's quest for 102 was very inspiring because even though obviously it got him down it upset him it got to him that he couldn't get this time that his friends were caking um he kept going and he eventually did it and it is like it is clear that he's not uh, a, a naturally born you know gamer struck with a lightning of gaming skill into his core like someone like maybe a mark rutsu or a mirror mage um he's just a guy playing video games and yet he can do it still uh he can do it too he can nail the world record and so maybe you the viewer can do it as well and that's the inspiration that i hope many people can take away from from speed lore and speed running and all this great stuff as a whole so way to go birdie uh, everyone's happy for birdie and that is the way it is january 2018 we now see 23 people have 102 early 2019 we get to see our friend madman fletcher i always do love showing when he gets a world record because we show his beginner runs Always going to show his world records. <laughs> no, Cordy. Cordy, don't you dare spread this. I'm not going to be able to read chat. I'm not going to be able to read chat. No. <laughs> what will I do? Everyone just starts speaking backwards. I'm fucked. It's gonna be too much to parse through. <laughs> Although I suppose if I read at the same speed that it takes you guys to type this shit out. I'm told we need a volume warning. I will turn the volume down, but even so, You've been warned. Oh no. <laughs> no. That pace was bad. Those locks were really good, but the pace I don't think was fast enough. Oh yes! Yes! I just- YES! Yes! Oh my god, boys! Look at that! How the f How the f was that 102? What the f dude? Yes! Holy shit! Oh my god, I just caked it. Tonight, at least. I caked it tonight. God damn! Holy shit! I got like... Two 103s tonight or something? Holy shit! That pace wasn't even that good. Oh my god. <laughs> Very epic world record by uh, Madman Fletcher. Like, I'm always happy to show his runs uh, when he nails the world record. Um, because such done such a great service for us recording all these epic uh, early playthroughs. And, yeah, he would have been like, I, I guess the 25th player to get 102. 
roughly um maybe the 30th roughly the 30th player so yeah a whole uh, 102 start to roll in more and more as we would see and and so great job by the madman fletcher himself 102 it almost has become like a rite of passage for players obviously it's the most tied record and so it's one that many people seem to think they can get okay there's two more 102s i'm going to show for sure then we're going to get into really into was 101 possible this one's a bit troll this is dusky's 102 it's an edit He's showing all the 102s that have happened. So, I don't know if you guys know, there was a Family Guy episode where they parodied Goldeneye briefly. And... So this shows the partial run. It was presented in K4 on Horde. Obviously, we should show the full run. It's more of a cinematic presentation. Um, but the locks from the Family Guy segment... I'm not going to show the full Family Guy segment. Obviously, you know, YouTube's really picky about TV shows and stuff, but... Take a look here. Obviously Dusky acting as if those were his locks. And he obviously didn't actually get 101. This was... A joke. It was a joke, but it was a good joke. It was a well-executed, funny troll. Especially when you're watching one of these unhoard videos in progress, um, you don't you know what you're gonna expect. You don't, and so jokes play well because you're expecting oh, this is some insane world record, and it's it's something funny. Um, I, I imagine the microphone quality was was intended. I mean, Dusky knows his his stuff technically. I mean. The locks they edited, I wonder if the Family Guy, they must have watched speedruns to, like, know the ending and how the locks fly off. They must have known. I'm sure whoever animated that Family episode watched some speedruns. Yeah, there is a scene in Family Guy. I'm sure if you search on YouTube, you'll be able to find it, but obviously I don't want to show it because... You know how copyright and so on is on YouTube, especially. Here's another one called Century Club by Yendis. It was linked, I think, Joris. And we love Joris. A huge thanks to Joris for co-researching the episode and compil compiling this great list of all the records. Um, he linked this as Bands' Amalgamates Service 1102. But it actually looks like it was... Yendis. So let's just watch. It. It's a music run. I believe it's music that I can I can play on on stream. So that's positive. It's a good point, Glover. I was going to mention Dusky's pizza reviews. I forgot. Now we're on to Yendis's run. So so that's that. Yeah, it's true, Samo. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah, okay, so it sounds like Peter and Meg escape Korean prison in that episode of Family Guy. So what is the music here? What's the music here? Some, some Metal Rainbow Road remix. Sounds pretty epic. F-Zero X Rainbow Road. Wow, that's really cool, JD Black. I had no idea. Bands is a great video too. I mean, the music here is a jam. Baby. 
Nice job, Yendis nailed the 102. And so we can see 102s are starting to really roll in here. My friends, is 101 possible? I think the best way to get to like this part of it is by watching part of my the video I made, which was is is Surface One Agent 101 possible? I made a whole video; it's 17 minutes long. I guess we'll watch the last four minutes where we talk about well, what needs to be talked about. So. So let's just dive in and, and, and learn a little bit more about anything. I mean, think about it this, right? Clemens is 102.9. Subtract 0.36 for the 2.2 control stall. Subtract 0.15 for the crouch. That's half a second gone. Add a, a boost for the Santos boost. This is our 0.3. We've now taken off 0.8 seconds from 102.9. We're down to 102.1. We're getting really, really close to 101 being possible. But let's learn a little bit more here. So now is the time for our last resort. Let's watch the tool assisted speedrun done by Scared Mix in 2013, knowing very well that humans aren't capable of locks as seen here. All right, a time of 59 seconds is cool and all, but did you catch that? As Scared Mix was approaching the ventilation tower, he had just the right angle to see into the great area, fire a couple of shots, and break one of the locks. In fact, if we watch this clip using the RCP-90s to shoot at the locks, we can see that if you shoot through the other side of the tree texture, you can unload the tower in such a way that all the locks are hittable. Now, let me be clear, this has been played around with before, and no one has ever hit more than one shot on one lock when testing this without sheets on, but it is at least theoretically possible. Just how many lock hits would you need to save enough time for 101? One lock completely off? Two shots on two separate locks? If we look at my Surface One Agent 102, we can see I spent a slightly more than ideal amount of time on this 3 o'clock position lock. What if I was able to shoot it off before even getting there and could skip it completely? Would this be enough for 101? If we agree we need to save 0.2 seconds more for 101, then probably yes. But if we recall the unreliability of the Santos boost, then we probably need to save 0.5 seconds, and shooting off one more lock might still not be enough. So, in conclusion, is Surface One Agent 101 possible? Honestly, we don't really know. We don't really know. Um, I think I do get into the spray and pray at the very end. But, yeah, someone asked about grenades as well, which is, oh yeah, here's the spray and pray, right? I kind of talk about how, like, oh, maybe... Maybe you just gotta go up there and, and literally spray and pray and hope. And that was a really good spray and pray attempt for 12 shots. Um, so that's an option. And also the um, grenade. Yeah, you can't get a grenade because I explained it in this video. I'll link this video in the end card of the lore as well. You can't spray and pray because... Or you can't get a grenade because you have to eliminate the large key guard who's in the cabin... And to save two seconds, that's way too much of a detour. So that's not something you can do. Um, but yeah, it's explained fully in this in this part of the video. So we're kind of stuck, right? Um, this is a, a hilarious TAS. It's Weister's... Uh, it's the M strategy. Weister's 135.00. But the locks here are just, like, ridiculously hilarious. There's, there's the locks. Right? That's that's the TAS now. So, like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> really, really funny locks. Obviously, can that be done on console? No one's ever done better than one shot on one lock on console. So, even though this is maybe an option, it's, like, not one that really can happen on... Like, you know, no one's... Who knows? Who knows? It's out there, but, like, no one's mastered it yet. So, I'm going to show some, some couple more runs and, and some comparisons, and that 
really wraps up the lore. So this 102 by Grav is very notable because it has the fewest amount of lock shots. He has a 15 lock shot, 15 shot locks. So a very, very insane and notable run, great for comparisons to other runs. I believe in in a 12 shot locks. I do believe it's possible. It would have to be so perfect. And the fact that it's at the end of a one minute level makes it more insane, right? If you if you simply ever drive a save state right at the end of surface one, you could probably get 12 shot locks after like 10,000 tries, you know? Okay, cool, Learning Lab. I, I actually, because I'm showing some comparisons now, I might actually show that. So, there's Grav building some leg warps. 15. 15 shots. The lowest ever. The lowest of anyone's first 102. 102. Unbelievable time. 15 shots. Now, I made a comparison a long time ago of... Clemens's 102 versus uh, Grav's 102. Clemens has the audio. I'm going to skip ahead to the guard. And the runs are so close that, like, even if you hear the... Um, if you try to watch Grav's screen and listen to the audio, it'll sound like it's his audio because the runs are so close. There's no difference. Right, these runs are like identical in terms of pace. Even there, they both they had different strafe changes in the in the house, but they both left at almost the exact same time. And so I believe Grav's run was like four frames ahead of Clemens's, which is pretty good. Okay. Grav's run starts two frames after Clems, finishes four frames before, so it's six frames faster. So, yeah, it's weird because Grav uses the crouch ending, which should save those six frames. Which means that the locks, even though they look faster and were only 15 shots, maybe that didn't matter. Maybe it didn't save any time compared to Clemens's 18 shot locks. So yeah, that's very it is really interesting. Okay, so here is Learning Lab and Irie 102s. Let's do this comparison. And again, similar thing where you're probably going to hear the runs are so synced, it probably looks like the audio could come from either one. Wow. So here is the, probably the most significant run of the night. Cali W, and I thought about showing his original 102. He would have been like the second person at 102 with 2.2 control style after Riolo. Let's watch this run. And again, we got to think about, remember in that clip I showed from my video, we tallied up all the, all the time that um, could have been saved. You know, take Clemens' 102.9. 2.2 saves 0.35. Crouching saves 0.15. That's 0.5 now total. The, the Santos boost saves 0.3. Now we're down to 0.8. What would a 102.1 with that old point saved look like? Let's see.
interesting strafe difference in the hut there. Seventeen shot. Surface one agent one oh two. Almost untied. Almost untied. Um okay. There is some technical analysis to get to with this run, for sure. I threw this run in the comparison that we just saw between Clem and Grav. I have Clem's audio and Callie's audio on. So you'll be able to hear now how much faster Callie's run is than Clem's run, and that's important. Yeah, Callie's been known to really master 2.2 for one. And also, to look down so much to save the most leg possible. The reason Cowley slapped the guard later was because he watched more cutscene, and so the guard was further away. But look how far ahead he is now. He's significantly far ahead. 0.3 maybe. Maybe more, maybe 0.5. He's far ahead. It's really hard to get a gauge of, but like, if I were to attempt to count the frames, it's hard to like see when the when the when's the first frame that this is okay. So this is the first frame that the end screen comes up for Cali. Let's count how many frames we have. Thirty frames make one second. So there's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. And then Grav's screen comes up. So knowing that, and then Clem is about 20 or 29 frames. So knowing that 30 frames make one second, this run by Cali is literally f five frames off from 101. It's that close. It is really getting that close. And I think the visible frames is what matters. So I talked to Callie about this run, and Callie told me that real time, this run is 101.7, real time. However, in game time, it's 102. Now, we still don't really know what justifies or explains that, but the real time is 101.7. Um, He's had real-time 101.6 and 101.5, which weren't 101 either. Like, if we look at his comment on his Surface 1 Secret Agent 146, we can see that he had this 146 was 147.1 real-time, and he's had 146.4s, which were 147. So the real-time, compared to in-game time, doesn't always jive. It doesn't always add up which is unfortunate. Um, but I think as I showed in this comparison, you could clear, like we counted 26 visible frames of Cali's run before the next one showed up. And that's just under one second. And yeah, I mean, Cali, 
did tell me, like, look, if I get 101, we'll do it on lore. We'll show it on lore. And, uh, Callie's in chat. He got 82, 102 stunt. He's been trying hard for 101, and it has just evaded his grasp. There is a chance he gets 101 before I upload this video. If so, I'll, I'll tack it on at the end, you know, but as it stands right now, you know, roughly 10 a.m. Universal Coordinated Time on February 24th, 101 has not yet happened, and 102 is still the world record on Surface One Agent, tied by 54 people. And it's the most tied record in, in GoldenEye. And that's pretty amazing. But obviously, Cowley's come very, very close. If he gets it, he'll get the untied sweep. So that's a lot of added motivation. On top of that, um, 102 is the longest standing record in currently in the game. 4,700 days. It's the only one in the top 10 all time. Second longest is Dam 116. Still got a lot of a, a lot of time to go to make top 10. Actually, not as much time as I thought, but still. Surface 1 102 is an all-time legendary record, and Cowley's come within frames of getting 101 and just hasn't quite done it yet. So who knows what the future will behold, you know? One thing to definitely note is the Santos boost. It used to be completely mysterious to us. Even in my video about it, Is Surface 1 101 Possible, I talk about how it's rare, we don't really understand it, and I even mention how Santos you know, had talked about overclocking consoles, and maybe this had something to do with it, even though there's no proof that ever happened, I have to declare that. It was that mysterious, we looked for these, like, other reasons why Santos got the boost. However, now we know that if you watch both opening cutscenes, getting the Santos boost actually isn't that uncommon. And that's why, if you remember earlier in the lore, I was so shocked when I saw Santos watch both cutscenes. It was like he knew something 13 years ago that no one else picked up on in all that time until recently. And, you know, this is Callie's run. He watches both cutscenes, and then he goes on and gets the Santos boost. And it is kind of crazy how overlooked that was. Obviously, it's not consistent. How consistent would you... How often do you get the Santos boost, would you say, Callie? I'm curious. You know, he's in chat saying he has 1,784 102s, which is absolutely mind-blowing. That's, um... You know, the level's a minute long, so 60 in an hour, 610 hours. That's almost 30 hours of of, uh, of Surface 1 102 is by Cali alone. So a few an hour. So a few an hour is maybe 1 in 10. 1 in 10 chance, I think it's probably fair to say. If you watch both cutscenes hit the Santos boost. So we're getting closer. These sort of m mythical and mystical uh, knowledge are becoming demystified. I wonder, though, if... You know, I wonder if... S Santos boost... Cowley's strafing look-down gameplay... And... One shot on the lock through the trees. I wonder if that might be enough to do it. So... It's really, really remarkable stuff. I know some people were thinking, hey, maybe 101's going to be unhoarded tonight, and uh, and simply, that's not the case. But, if what Callie is saying in chat is true, and I'm sure it is, 101 may not be too far into the future. And, uh, yeah, that's a good point, Eliminator. Um, it's possible that no one else is on Callie's level yet. I would say that's probably true. Um, so, right now, Cali's probably the only one to get 101. But, as we saw even in, in, in this lore, it sometimes can surprise you, the players who can who join the party, when there's a party to be had, so. And yeah, I mean, Cali even told me about a run he had where, again, the run we watched, that was Cali's insane 102.0. Like 
was a 101.7 real time. He said he had a pause out at the grate where the last lock hit at one minute point six, like right there. It was one minute point six, and he missed. Uh, he missed another one of the locks. So that's almost a full second faster than this, or it is a full second faster than this. And so Cali is almost a believer in one minute, which may seem mind blowing now, but maybe we'll look back in 30 or 40 years and, and kind of laugh at how, how mind blowing it was for us now. So yeah, really, really insane stuff. Obviously, even though many of us will lose a world record, uh, we all are cheering for Cali to get 101. And um, hey, hopefully, hopefully we'll see it happen uh, very soon. So yeah, big thanks to Cali for, for showing up and dropping that knowledge and, and filling me in on, on all his fastest runs um, over the past couple months. So it's a, he's way ahead of everyone else on the stage and uh, we look forward to seeing what happens next. So hey, that is Surface One Agent Speed Lore, the first episode of Season 5, the uh, finale season of Speed Lore, which is pretty insane and hard to believe. I told our pal um, uh, Sammy Limex, Speed Lore Champion, I would show him this list of the Speed Lores left to do. So yeah, let's throw it over here for now. Um, but there isn't much. The purple levels are for sure episodes remaining. Train 00, Frigate Agent. So there's two for sure remaining. Damn 00 is the finale. That's three at least for sure remaining. Now, Surface 200, I've thought, do I do a lore or not? I would say I'm leaning towards that now. That'd be four. And then Damn Agent and the Runway Agent, Secret Agent, maybe could be a lore. That would make five or six more episodes. And then I do want to redo Frigate Secret Agent and Bunker 1 Double Agent. Those two are the ones I kind of want to redo the most of any. So at most, we have those eight episodes left. So again, that's for sure Frigate Agent and Train Double Agent and Damn Double Agent Finale. We have probably Surface 2 Double O, uh, maybe redoing Frigate SA and Bunker 1 Double O, and maybe doing Runway agent secret agent and damn agent maybe on those two are a big maybe because i'm not sure there's enough content there um for full episodes but who knows so there's the update on what season five will bring could be anywhere from four to eight episodes and and we'll see from there but well hey a huge thanks to these speed lore legends for supporting speed lore on patreon uh your support truly makes this possible again into a new year so thank you immensely for that and thank you everyone else all the chatters the lurkers the viewers the other supporters on patreon and everyone who has simply enjoyed speed lore at any time and everyone who has helped make this journey possible by chiming in information and stories and, and runs and videos all that kind of good stuff so we'll be back next month with another episode for sure so until then, stay true, my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video. Good night.